Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen I'm going to show you how to make a Colomba Pasquale which is the panettone version, well it's like the Easter version of a panettone. If you're familiar with a panettone it's like a, a, an Italian Christmas uh, fruit cake which is delicious. It is not at all <laughs> the fruit cake that you're thinking of, I know you're thinking of, the really hard awful fruit cake that you just buy because it is you know Christmassy. Panettone is delicious. This is the Easter version. It's unbelievably good. I've been working on this recipe since last year and we have perfected it and it's so good. We ate an entire Colomba, the three of us, in 24 hours. I bow because that's an accomplishment and you know it. Let me run you through the list of ingredients because it's not very big but it's all the right ones. You'll need some whole milk and this is not hot but it's just a little more at room temperature. You don't want it ice cold. A few eggs. In here, what I have is candied orange, I've got some golden raisins, flour, salt, granulated sugar. This is some biga, which we'll talk about in just a minute. You need some butter, unsalted, softened to room temp. You need some instant yeast. This is instant sometimes. It's also known as uh, bread machine yeast or bread yeast. Um, and then you have an orange and some vanilina. And that's it. You also need a few more ingredients for the topping, which is what makes this so incredible. But I'll show you that when we get to it. Let's talk about the biga, or the starter, if you will. I did this last night because you needed to let it rest at room temperature for 16 hours and I ain't waiting around 16 hours today. I got a colomba to eat. So all I have in here is some water, some flour and a tiny pinch of yeast and I covered it and I left it on my counter for 16 hours and that is what it looks like. This is really important. It's going to give you that flavor and it's going to give you the rising um, element in this whole thing. It's just, it's important. So you'll do this the night before and I will have everything written for you um, in the, you know, in the recipe portion of the of the recipe in the, in the instructions recipe portion you get it you feel me I'm gonna go in with my standing mixture fitted with a dough hook and I'm gonna get started because this is really easy you're gonna take all of your dry ingredients right you really take you kind of just take all of your ingredients and you mix them together now I've done this recipe many times tested it over the course since last year really and I really have found that there is no rhyme or reason not to just add everything in at the same time. Honestly, you don't need to do it in stages. You can if you want to, but you don't. I'm using instant yeast. I've been using instant yeast a lot more often recently. It rises faster. You don't have to activate it and it's fabulous. So you just add it right in. You need the zest of a half an orange. This is a really big orange. You can also add a little bit of lemon zest here if you want to, but I just prefer orange. Get it all out in there. Don't get any of the yellow part because that's bitter. All right, that looks great. My Italian vanilla, this is like powdered vanilla. If you don't have it, don't worry, just use vanilla extract. But, you know, I, I do think that it makes a difference, obviously. But come on! All right, here we go. Add that right in and it smells unbelievable. That little teeny tiny packet smells so good. I'm just going to give everything a stir, right? And then I'm going to go in with my milk, my eggs, and then my biga. Get that all out in there. It's really sticky and lovely and it's going to just going to be just right. It looks really weird at this point, but you have to trust me that over time, because it's going to rise for a long time, twice, it's just going to be unbelievable. And then when we top it with its signature topping, oh, fabulous. And you need your soft butter. Now, this needs to go in your mixer to knead on medium speed for a good five or six minutes. I want this to be, you know, I, I want this to, to knead for a while. Um, and I will show you what it looks like when it's there. So make sure you put on a dough hook and not a paddle attachment because it'll never come off. So just let it go and I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. That is exactly what you're looking for. You're not going to get like a heavy like bread like dough, like a really you know, stiff dough. It's going to be a little bit sticky, a lot sticky. But that's what you want. Get out of there. That's what you want. You know, I posted a photo of this because I made it, like I said, I made it last week. Um, and I posted a, a photo of it on my stories on um, Instagram, on my Instagram stories. And I cannot, I, I honestly cannot tell you how many people 
messaged me about it and um, because I found really interesting that so many people thought that you couldn't make it at home. They couldn't believe that I made it at home and it's really not difficult. It's just getting the texture right, the topping, you know, the flavor, but it's not difficult. If you can make panettone, if you can make bread, you can make colomba. It's very easy. So I'm just going to take this and put it into a buttered bowl. You could use a little vegetable oil if you want to, but I just had some soft butter already out. So I'm just carefully getting it out of here. Oh, goodness. Come on. I'm going to get it all out. This is a little bit harder. If I had my little soft bench scraper, it would have been easier. Okay. And now I'm just going to cover this with some plastic wrap and let it rise for a couple of hours or until it's, I won't say it's about the same, um, yeah, same capacity, I guess, is the bowl, like a nice big amount of dough. So I'm gonna cover this, pop it somewhere warm to rise completely undisturbed. Normally, I really like the microwave, you know, I've told you this a million times, but what works really well too is if you put it in your oven, oven turned off with the light on, Man, it does the job. So I'm gonna do that and I'll, I'll meet you back here in just a little bit. Now this looks magnificent. Set that aside, because I'm just gonna reuse it. Because that's what I do. Okay, this has been rising for a couple of hours and it looks perfect. So set that aside for just a few seconds. Let's talk mold for a second. This is a Colomba mold, okay? This is what it traditionally looks like. You can buy these online. Um, I purchased mine, I purchased like a 12 pack on Amazon, but if you just Google Colombo mold, they will come up and whatever you find, just get them because they sell out like crazy. You would think that this thing is made out of gold or something and they sell out really fast and they're hard to find when they do sell out. So just search it. You can also just make a mold out of aluminum foil. You absolutely can do that, it's not that difficult. And then what you do is you take four ramekins, right? You just put one, two, three, and four and it holds its shape. So whatever your heart desires, but try to look for one if you wanna make it as authentic as possible. So now I just take my dough, right? It's really sticky and lovely, and I just kinda of deflate it using a fork because I'm not gonna mold this into anything. I'm just gonna plunk this, right? I'll show you. Right onto my surface. I don't wanna add any additional flour though if I don't have to. Get it all out. And then I just try to work as quickly as possible and I'll cut this into like two thirds. I know this sounds crazy because I'm not adding any flour, but you really want to avoid adding any extra flour if you can. And I just kind of spread it out like that. Take the rest, put it in like so. I know I look like a crazy person, but you know, you know, I got, a re I got a reason for everything. <laughs> if you add any extra flour, it just ends up being a little too doughy. So if I can avoid it, then I do. And I just take my hands and I kind of spread this out a little bit just to kind of fit the mold. But this is going to rise once again and it's going to fill out all the little nooks and crannies. So I'm just going to, you could use a little flour if you want to, but this is good for me. I, I like living on the edge. I like living dangerously, you know? It's about the only area of my life I do that. <laughs> So, all right, I'm going to cover this back up and I'm going to let this rise once again for a couple of hours. I want it to come to about the top of the mold and then I will show you the next step before we bake it. And it smells just a dough, it smells like colomba. You can see how beautiful this is. It's been rising for a couple of hours. It's exactly where we want it. So now let's work on the topping, which by the way is non-negotiable. <laughs> so in here I've got an egg white. I also have some ground almonds and sugar pearled sugar, and I've got here some whole almonds. Again, this is not negotiable. Colomba is almost known for its lovely bronzed, I would say, layer on the very top. It's really crunchy, it's fantastic. I've got my oven preheated to 350, and we're gonna get going on the topping. So you take your egg white, and you just kinda whisk this until it becomes really nice and frothy. Perfect. Then you add in your ground almonds and sugar and you just give those a nice stir. And it's really thick and lovely. Now you carefully, what I did by the way to my plastic wrap is I just sprayed it with a little bit of nonstick spray so that it didn't stick too much to the top of the colomba. And then you just take a pastry brush and you just carefully, you're not really painting it on, you kind of just 
tapping it on, I suppose, right? Just want to make sure that the whole surface is covered with this mixture. Perfect. And then you just take pearl sugar and you just sprinkle this all over the top, like so. And then you very gently, and I keep saying gently and carefully because you don't want to deflate all the hard work that you put into, you know, this dough rising so beautifully. So you just kind of carefully put the almonds over the top. And don't worry if you don't feel like they're sinking in because once it bakes, it kind of does. Now this beauty just goes into a 350 degree oven for 35 to 40 minutes. You want to make sure that it's a beautiful browns, like bronze color on top, but that the sides and the bottom are not burned. So keep an eye on it because usually 35 minutes is the sweet spot with this. So once that's done, I'm going to let it cool and then we dig in. That's right. My Colomba was in the oven for 35 minutes and it is magnificent. It really is gorgeous. Now. Sometimes, you know, it'll overrise just a tiny bit, you know, on the sides, like, for example, like right here, but that's never a problemo. Please. How do I get this paper off, though? Let's see. Oh, my word! I mean, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's Make sure you, you spray your mold with a nonstick spray so that nothing sticks. I just got to turn it to the, the side because I am right-handed. Oh, look at that gorgeousness. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Did I mention I let this cool for half an hour? Because I did. Because it, 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 it's, it's, it's just beautiful. It's just the right amount of denseness. You can see the bottom is not burned at all. It's just perfectly cooked. It is just a really beautiful, tender, like I said, just the right amount of denseness. Mm. The sweetness is just perfect. I gotta get a piece of the crust. Home run. Really delicious. Really beautifully done. It's perfection. So easy. You have to make this because it will become something that you will want to make every single year. I know it's something that I'm now going to make every year right alongside my Easter sweet bread because if you follow me on social media, you know I make it every single Easter without fail. It's just, it makes the house into a home for the holiday season. Go to Laura in the kitchen account to get this recipe. If you make this, which I hope you do, share your recipe on Instagram so I can see it. I hope you enjoy spending time with me and I will see you very soon. Ciao, ciao.